This is just a quick video on the CHM T36VA pick and place machine. I posted a series of videos a few months ago on the basics of using it and I've been asked to explain how to set up a, a panelized pick and place program. So if you're not familiar with panelization of PCBs in pick and place manufacturing, it's where you would take a single PCB and duplicate it in a panel like this. So this is one small PCB that's been duplicated 20 times onto a single panel and obviously it makes it uh, far more convenient for handling small PCBs. It makes the uh, entire process more efficient and it means you don't have to handle single small PCBs trying to get those into the machine etc uh, which is very time consuming and what this essentially lets you do is process a large number of PCBs at the same time. So to set up a, um, a panelization job with this machine is very straightforward. You create your work file in the same way that you normally would. So I've got it created here. And from your PCB CAD system, you would essentially produce um, a file of pick and place uh, places and components for a single board. So you don't worry about the panel. You can do the panel layout in the PCB um, CAD system, but it's a different process. So I've been asked to look at panelizing um, a single board from a, um, a PCB CAD system. Now, once you've got your PCB designed on your CAD system, you're obviously going to have to have it manufactured. And at that point, you have to decide whether you're going to duplicate it on your CAD system, so the manufacturer just makes what amounts to a single board, or whether or not you're going to provide the PCB manufacturer with the design of just a single panel, or single board rather, and they will then panelize it and lay it out into a, a larger panel. And you do that in conjunction with whether you want a, um, a solder mask uh, making up or stencil making up, and also the method you use for separating the boards. In this case, you can see they are V-scored, uh, where it's just a score line running down between them, or they can be routed, where a, a, a milling bit is run down between them, and gives a, a better finish. It depends on what you're designing. Uh, but the whole point is that somewhere along that process, there is a specification or a requirement for the PCBs to be spaced in the X and Y direction. When they're V-scored, they're obviously close together. Uh, when they're rooted or milled out, then they'll be further apart because you'll have a, a slot running between them in the X and Y directions. It doesn't make any difference from the um, pick and place setup as to which route you go. It's just different uh, measurements that you need to take. And quite often, your PCB manufacturer will tell you the exact um, pick and place dimensions that you need to use. However, you will still need to fine tune your pick and place machine to make sure it's placing correctly, especially with small parts. Okay, so once you've got your job file imported into the software and you've set it up to run as a single job, single board job, so if we look at this, you'll see that it's set up here as a, uh, a job in, it, in the same way as any other um, board would be. Uh, but instead of loading it, what you do is you click on edit. And what you have to do before you decide on the batch layout is just organize the board in the same way that you would for a single board. And this is one of the advantages in doing the panelization of the machine rather than in the CAD system. Because here we only need to deal with the components for a single board setting up the position, the orientations, etc. And we don't need to do it for every single component that's going to be placed on the panel. The machine will take care of that. Uh, all we need to do is tell the machine what we want in the batch. So before you do this, you've got to decide which way around you're going to mount the board, whether it's going to be this way or this way. So in this particular instance, I mounted the board this way up and then you have the X and Y directions. The X and Y runs left to right and the Y runs uh, front to back. And then what you need to do is determine what the spacings are for the board. Now this will vary of course depending on the type of um, board and the way that it's been uh, milled or scored. This particular board is V-scored, so scores running across so that they can be broken off. 
um, or the board may be milled where you have a, a mill slot running down between them with little tabs holding them together. Um, but either way, it makes no difference to the pick and place machine. What you need to do is tell the machine how far to step from one board to the next. So if your PCB manufacturer hasn't told you the spacings, just get a, um, a vernier or a rule. You'll need to tweak this anyway because it needs to be quite accurate and then measure the, um, the actual size of the board. It's best to measure it from component to component and sort of measure from one corner of one pad to the corner of the same pad on the next board. In this particular board it worked out to 17.8 millimeters in the y direction do the same thing for the x direction and in this case it works out let's give you a very rough uh, estimate it works out to about 33 millimeters and, and that is indeed what it uh, turned out to be what you then need to do is tell the software how many copies of the board there are on the panel so if we click on edit we tell the uh, software the spacing in the X direction and the Y direction, so it needs to step 17.8 millimeters once it's finished this board in this direction to get onto the next one. And when it's going in the Y direction, it needs to step 33 millimeters. And then it's just a case of entering how many boards there are across the panel in the X direction. In this case, there's five. And then how many in the Y direction. And in this case, there are four. So once you've done that, you save the job. If you want to, you can then check, and I recommend that you do check that the calibration is correct. So I will just mount the board into the machine and we'll just check the calibration to make sure that uh, what we've set here is correct. You will need to enter these values yourself because obviously the um, fiducials are slightly different on a board like this. If you've got the boards with a surround, then quite often the fiducials will be on the surround itself rather than the boards. Um, but either way it makes no difference as long as you know where they are in relation to the components on the board then just make sure you enter appropriate values so i'll fit the board to the machine okay so i've got the board in the machine if i now click on the calibrate button and we can check that the calibration <coughs> marks are indeed where we expect them to be so i've picked some corners here of the board in various uh, positions but you can select whatever you want and then you just um, set them up in the same way that you would normally. Okay, and then you just go through your three or two or three um, locations, get those set, and then once you've done that, the rest of the process is exactly the same as it was before so you'll find now this is saved as part of the job if you now go back to run and load you'll notice that in the left hand corner it's telling us there are 24 components on each board and we have a total of 20 pcbs that are going to be placed and as long as you've got the step uh, offsets correct then the way the machine will work is it will process each board. It will then step in the X and Y direction by the amount you've told it, and it will process the next board, and it will keep going until all the boards are processed. Okay, so that's how you do a, um, a panelization on the machine. It's different to how you would do it if you do your own panelization on your CAD system. If you've got any more questions, then uh, please leave a comment.